This is all the stuff that I have to give up. Oh no. I have this like butterfly rash. Elasticity or something. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna tuck him in there. I forgot what my kneecaps looked like, to be honest. So I recently did a video in which some friends and I took a blood test to find out whether or not we had any sensitivities to foods. The results were kind of heartbreaking. Number one thing that I am reactive to is wheat and gluten. That sucks. So I personally deal with a lot of inflammation and joint pain because of arthritis. In that video that I did, a lot of people in the comments asked me to actually give up gluten for 30 days. So that's what I'm gonna do because you asked for it. But I don't wanna do it alone, so I asked a few friends to join me. My name's David. I took a food sensitivity test and ended up being sensitive to gluten, among other things. I really just want to see if removing gluten gives me a different perspective, a different feeling, or, you know, kind of changes anything overall health-wise. I am very mindful of what I put into my body. I am really interested in what the difference is going to happen with my body, if anything at all. Are you upset that I surrounded you by all the things that you're going to have to give up? This is all the stuff that I have to give up. I thought it was just nice decor. Oh no! I do like whiskey. Um, I'm hoping that it does. No whiskey, um, so I can't drink to deal with the pain of not being able to have bread. No one told me that. Nobody read my last name. I'm Italian. I can't give up pasta. I'm extremely upset with Crystal for asking me to do this. Maybe at the end, after I feel accomplished, then I'll be happy. But for right now, we're not friends anymore because she represents me no longer having avocado toast. So going into week one, I was feeling pretty confident. I just got home from gluten-free grocery shopping for the first time. I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on where you find gluten in different foods. So I was actually pretty surprised when I found that a lot of things I was expecting to be naturally, naturally gluten-free ended up not being. I went to grab my favorite salad dressing and I realized it has wheat in it. Actually, all of the salad dressings that I looked at had wheat in them. Now I have to go through everything that's in my fridge because I didn't realize that my barbecue sauce had gluten. The bummer of salad dressings was really off-putting croutons because I eat salad every day. I was like, oh, I'll just find like gluten-free croutons. Impossible. But I was surprised to find some things that I could still enjoy, like rice is uh, gluten-free, obviously without the kind of wheat variant there. Didn't take away sushi, so that was nice. Uh, kind of had a way to treat myself. I sort of ended up just buying a lot of fresh produce and it was a lot cheaper than I was expecting. A lot of the vegan foods that I had already had, like I think it was like a chickpea pasta, that was gluten-free, so that was a good benefit, but I definitely needed to do a lot more research and a lot more studying to make sure I'm actually sticking to completely gluten-free across the board. We are feasting on some mofongo stuffing for oh. our holiday spring week, and it is to die. I don't get to eat the mofongo because it has gluten in it. Week one, it was like, oh, this is interesting. I'm going to explore. Week two, I was like, this is annoying. I just wasn't having enough variety because I was like, oh, this has gluten in it. And so I'm not going to find the alternative or it was really difficult to find the alternative. Definitely excited to get it over with. I miss avocado toast. I miss pasta, pizza. I don't even eat cake that much, but I miss that too. I will admit to you <laughs> that in week two, I did cheat a little. Twice. <laughs> Once was a total accident. We were testing a recipe for a food video that I was working on and it was this incredible short ribs with cauliflower mash and I had to try it, obviously, but I totally forgot that there was flour in it. Afterwards, I felt pretty crappy, but, but I don't know if that was from the gluten or from the shame. I had a really bad day. I'm eating gluten, a lot of it. Sorry. I felt awful about myself because I was like, I'm supposed to be committing to this. It didn't, it didn't feel any better. It was like I went out and got drunk, but instead I actually just ate gluten. And then there was this pretzel incident. I just donated blood. And uh, you know how afterwards they tell you you need to sit and relax, eat something. So I went to get myself a snack. Without even thinking about it, I just put pretzels and chocolate covered almonds into this cup. I put a pretzel in my mouth and then I realized, oh wait, I'm gluten free. <laughs> Today was a rough day at work and um, I feel like I deserve a small piece of sourdough bread. 
I mean, like, you know, there, it, it gets tough, you know, out here in these streets trying to not just eat gluten when you enjoy avocado toast as much as I do. But, you know, we got through that. We stepped over that hurdle and we got back on the horse. Week three, I really started to struggle. I found myself craving things that I don't normally eat anyway. I don't know if it was just that thing of when you can't have something, you just really want it more, but I was definitely driving the struggle bus. I've had a very long day, and as I was driving home, all I wanted was some french fries. I can't even remember the last time that I ate french fries, but tonight I was determined. I wanted some french fries. So I pulled over just so that I could Google where, what fast food chain has gluten-free french fries. And the results I got said nowhere. From what I found online, most places fry their fries in oil that also touches other things that have gluten in them. It's cross-contamination. So I came home and I happened to have some sweet potatoes and I made <laughs> some french fries. I didn't want to wait for them to bake so I pan fried them. It's not the same. It's not the same. It wasn't too hard to kind of fill my cart with stuff that was gluten-free. I actually was able to find some gluten-free mac and cheese, so that definitely saved the day and, um, you know, kind of made me feel better since I was able to still incorporate some of those comfort-type foods. I've been reaching out to other people who are gluten-free to get an idea of what they eat and things like that and to kind of take on that lifestyle choice as opposed to just figuring stuff out and substituting some stuff or just not eating bread for 30 days because I want to know what does this lifestyle actually look like? What does this diet actually look like? And is it something that will work for me past this challenge? I ended up going over to a friend's house for dinner. I assumed ahead of time that there was not gonna be anything that I could eat. And so I actually came prepared with food for myself just in case. But when I got there, it turned out that he was actually also following a gluten-free diet. So he made this really great spaghetti with brown rice noodles. I didn't miss spaghetti at all that day. So when we got to week four, it's like, okay, we've been doing this for quite a while, kind of playing the dance of, you know, avoiding bread and dreaming of it. And at that point, you know, the discipline was there, I felt like, and it wasn't so difficult to kind of steer clear of some of those things. Going out has still been a little bit of an issue just in regards to eating, but luckily I do live in Los Angeles, so there is a wide variety of options. What did you get? I got a burger with a gluten-free bun and a gluten-free beer. I would wonder what it would be like for somebody who doesn't live in like a large city and stuff like that. I went to Palm Springs and I was hit with the hard reality that I live in a gluten-free, friendly little bubble in Los Angeles. There is not a single gluten-free bread on this aisle. It is making finding groceries a little bit difficult. But that's the other thing that like kind of stinks. It's like for me, I'm doing a challenge, but for these other people, it's like, well, what if you don't have the capability to like order this stuff online? I also visited my family on that trip. And you know what? Look, I have seven older siblings. So I'm usually the butt of the joke when it comes to my weird wellness adventures. So I just wanted to avoid having to have that conversation and say that I wasn't eating gluten and it backfired. I've noticed that my cheeks are particularly rosy in a way that they have not been in a while. And I'm having a bit of a hard time convincing myself that this is coincidental, that I'm eating a bunch of gluten, I drink a beer, and all of a sudden I have this like butterfly rash. During this whole month, I've only seen that rash twice. And both times, it was directly after I ate something with gluten in it. I feel like pretty good. So I don't know if that's because of the gluten and like the placebo effect or it was actually making a difference. I normally use activated charcoal for my stomach. I will get stomach upset. Uh, I'll get a lot of bloating, discomfort and pain almost. Now I realize that I have not used it since I went gluten free, which is so interesting. And the only difference that I've had in the past month is taking out gluten. There's literally nothing else that I've changed. I will have to say that I felt like less bloated and less like lethargic and kind of groggy after some meals where I had gluten replacements. Even when I had like um, a gluten-free pasta, for example, like, you know, I had my fill, it was really good and everything, but I wasn't like necessarily just kind of like stuck afterwards. So I did wonder if like that's one of the main things that I could get from it. I was just laying down to go to sleep 
at the beginning of week four and I looked down and noticed something that I have not seen in a very long time, which is unswollen knees. I forgot what my kneecaps looked like, to be honest. I was just walking around on marshmallows for legs, basically. <laughs> It was such a stark contrast to how I usually feel that I was just kind of on the gluten-free train. I think as much as I can moving forward, I would probably stick gluten-free. I mean, now that I've found different substitutions and variations of things that I enjoy, why wouldn't I just stay with it? And I'm glad that I did the challenge like because of it. You know, it was interesting. I um, definitely am going to go and have probably three pieces of avocado toast um, let's see, maybe some penne pasta with some pesto and maybe some devil's food cake, I don't know. I did for sure have a countdown on my phone to get some bread and I definitely made sure to have some avocado toast um, after I finished. So after taking the sensitivity test, doing a bunch of research and doing this 30 day challenge, I think it's safe to say that I do actually have a gluten sensitivity. And moving forward, I fully intend to continue being gluten free. Thank you guys for watching and for your concern for our health and suggesting that we do this video because without you, I would not be feeling this good right now. If there are any other health and wellness challenges that you want us to try, let us know in the comments below. Um, with some of my research, I saw that gluten is like what gives bread its elasticity or something. So. <laughs> you gonna tuck him in there. That's all that is. See, this is gluten-free, because it was supposed to.